CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. You know, I'm always glad to have you in my home. And as I say these words, I think how easily most of us take the word for granted. How much that simple word has been lauded in song and verse. Think of the quotes, home, sweet home. Home is where the heart is. The sacred joys of home. And a hundred others. And of all of them, the one which best suits this story. Charity begins, or should begin, at home. My visitor had come, no doubt of that, and I was ready to go with him willingly. And then, suddenly, I heard Muriel's voice calling me back. And I sensed she was in trouble, that she needed me. So I came back, or awoke, or whatever it was. Did I go beyond the grave? I don't know. I only know it was to the edge. But I came back. I shall not return till I've done what I was called back to do. Our mystery drama, The Patient Visitor, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Ian Martin and Marion Seldes. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and all state insurance companies. I'll be back shortly. With Act One. Most of us take it for granted. A roof over our heads. A house, an apartment, a mobile trailer. Somewhere there is home. But what of all those who don't have a home? Those who are lost, who have outlived their usefulness and their welcome, and don't have a roof over their heads. Suddenly alone and homeless. This is the story of one such uncomplaining but sensible and gallant lady. Good evening. Oh. Uh, good evening. I... Perhaps I've made a mistake. I... Well, I hope not. Uh, were you looking for the judge? Well, for Justin Travers, isn't this his home? It is. And I'm just a visitor, Dr. Ridgely. A widower like Justin. We often have dinner together and play some chess. But tonight, he chased me out. And I see why now. You want to see him. I have to see him. I I need a lawyer. Mm. Are you an old friend of his? Well, yes, but so long ago. Perhaps if you were to mention my father's name to him, he, he might... Your father? Dr. Cyrus Cartwright. Good heavens. The great heart specialist? That's right. Justin speaks of him often. He was a client of Justin's. His firm, at any rate. And you must be Muriel, the girl who... (laughs) I beg your pardon. Uh, uh, Mrs., I believe. Mrs. William Parks, now. Although my husband passed on. Uh, What were you saying? What I shouldn't be, really. Except that Justin is expecting you. Expecting me? Yes, he said he had an appointment with someone he wanted to meet alone. Ew, the rascal. I don't blame him. The door is open. He must have grown hard of hearing. There's no one here. Oh, yes, in the big wing chair. I see his hand lying on the arm. Yes. Who is it? Mr. Travers. Someone so far out of the past, I don't know if you'll remember me. Muriel Parks. You recognize me by my voice. Oh, no. By my memories. But your eyes are closed. Perhaps. But I still see you as you were one over 40 years ago. 
small and slim and all abrim with life and the excitement of it. And you had on a mulberry suit and a pink scarf and a ridiculous hat, except that on you it wasn't. And I thought you were quite the most beautiful and desirable thing I had ever seen. <laughs> now that I open my eyes, you haven't changed a whit in all those years. That's an outrageous statement. Now, where did you come from? I rang your bell. Dr. Ridgely opened the door. He said something about you expecting me, but how could you? Well, I don't understand. He said that you had an appointment with someone. Oh, oh, the... oh that, I ah, yes, I did, but j- that will have to be put off. Much more important to see you again, Muriel. I'm amazed you even remember me. Well, how could I fail to? For me, you haven't changed in all those years. Well, that's very gallant, but scarcely true. Well, 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 won't you sit down, please, and let me offer you some wine? Oh, thank you. Perhaps I might sit for just a moment. I, I feel a little shaky. I think this might be just the thing to settle us both down. <laughs> A really fine, dry Amontillado, if I may. Oh, thank you. I'm a little shaky myself. To your father, God rest him, and I trust he will me. And old days, well remembered. Thank you. I need help. I only hope I'm able to offer it. Well, I hope you'll forgive me, but you were my father's lawyer, and I... I didn't know where else to turn. Well, Mr. Poindexter, the senior member of the firm, was actually your father's attorney. Uh, the doctor who let me in said that you had been a judge, but that now you're retired. Oh, that's true enough. But not yet dead enough that I can't be exhumed to help old friends. <laughs> uh, just a little more sherry. Oh, no, thank you. This is enough to make me quite giddy. <laughs> <laughs> Your eyes are sparkling as they were that first time you came to our office. 1935, maybe, thereabouts. And you just made your debut. Well, considering the times, I should have been ashamed of myself. I was driving my own Packard Roadster. I had a new spring dress. And I had been to the Patriarch's Ball the night before. You <laughs> were the loveliest thing I've ever seen. Was there ever a world like that? Or was it just a dream. I remember I cut your picture out of the road of your and slipped it into the corner of my dressing room mirror. Why didn't you ever try to see me? Oh, I was afraid to. You had every bone town at your feet and it seemed so much time. And... There always does when you're young. Mm. Besides, I was a good deal older. Oh, not that much. You might have called. I might have, but I didn't. Why? Because you got married to someone else. So did you. Ah, so I did. And I I hear your wife is dead. Yes, and with her gone, not much to live for. And uh, you? My husband, oh, he, he died a long time ago. Where does it go to, the time? My daughter, too. Now there's just myself and my granddaughter. And that's why I'm here. Is she in trouble, your granddaughter? Margaret, oh, heavens, no. Well, yes, in a way she is. She wants to get married to a fine young man. But something stands in the way. Yes, me. Mr. Travis. Oh, surely, after all, this Justin. All right, then, Justin. I haven't any money. My dear Muriel, if that's no, all no, you no, could... I, don't, I didn't mean that. Well, I... What is it, then? Well, Dick, that's the boy Margaret's in love with has his own parents to support, and he, he just can't afford me to. So, since I'm in the way, I made up my mind to move out. All right. Well, I remembered vaguely that my father had left a sum of money in his will to a kind of a home. I was looking at the paper one morning, and there were quite a few advertisements for that sort of thing, and this one just leapt out and met my eye. Oh, uh, just let me get my specs. <clears throat> Now, let's see here. Croverton. A home from home for aged gentlewomen in the twilight of their lives. For women of 65 or over, transfer of property of not willed relatives, unlimited visiting hours, Long Island, New York. Totally supervised with full facilities overlooking the sound. If home is where the heart is, then Cloverton is where you belong. Admission fee, $500. 
Oh, 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 my dear Muriel, you can consider seriously... That's not the problem, Justin. My mind is quite made up, and for that matter, I've already made the plunge. I didn't have all the money, but I was able to raise part of it. How? Well, I... I sold my wedding ring. It had some diamonds. It's a little old-fashioned, of course, but I got $250 for it. And they wouldn't accept that? Well, that wasn't a stumbling block. Then what? It's quite a long story, and I'm taking so much of your time. You really... All I mind is your hesitation. Well, this morning, with the money I'd gotten from selling my ring, I went out to Cloverdom. Which I will bet overlooks the sound. (laughs) Entirely. (laughs) <laughs> it might just as well not be there. It is so far overlooked. <laughs> How did you know? Well, I haven't been a lawyer and a judge all these years for nothing. Justin, it's a dreadful place. I I can't even begin to describe it. Please to don't try. And with all the will in the world, I found it hard to like the... I, mean, I, I suppose she was trying to be nice. Well, did you tell her who you were? I mean, about your father? Oh, yes. Well, that seemed to melt the ice a little. I can just imagine. Well, well, tell me about it. Well, what you're trying to explain is that you don't have the full entrance fee, Mrs. Parks. I have half. Of course, and uh, no other assets. Well, my father gave you our house to be part of your home and some money, I think. I'm sure he did. Uh, Now, this is the... It's a little difficult for me, Mrs. Parks. You see, I'm only assistant superintendent of Cloverdon Homes Incorporated, and at at the moment, we are full up. You mean you won't take that? Oh, no, no, I'm quite sure that... I I think I can say without fear. Well, now, I believe it would be better for you to see the superintendent himself, Mr. Blessing. Could I see him now, then, please? Oh, Mr. Blessing is seldom out here. Now, you'll have to see him at our New York address. You mean my old home in New York City? Yes. But uh, please, let me call him and uh, tell him you're coming. If you want. If I'd known I could have gone there directly, I wouldn't have had to make this long trip by subway and bus. This is the address you list in your advertisement. Oh, yes. This is the main institution, but the administration is all handled from New York. New York I went, a little upset at the wasted trip, but more than anything, afraid to go back to my past, to the house where I grew up, to the house I suppose in a sense you could say I hoped to die in, only mine no longer, and if I lived in it again, only as a guest, and somehow I had the feeling in spite of all an unwelcome one, a ghost presence from the past that no one expected or wanted to haunt the present. Have you ever had the feeling, Justin, that if you are not already dead, you should be, that there isn't any place for you anymore? We'll have to wait for Justin Travers to answer that question for himself. But while we do, you might ask yourself, if not the same question, a light one. Is your life arranged so that you feel you truly belong, that it is vital and worthwhile, and, to use a modern word, viable? If not, how do you make it so? I shall return shortly with Act Two. Under shaggy eyebrows, the keen brown eyes of Justin Travers burn fiercely, his gaze unwaveringly fixed on the neat little lady beside him. And Muriel Parks is a tidily attractive woman, with her figure still slim and youthful in her 60s, and her silver hair is soft curves framing her alive and surprisingly unlined face like a halo. But in Justin's eyes... She is still that radiant chestnut-haired girl of 40 years ago. And what is running through his head would be hard to translate. 
How dare anyone ever heard of her if you had, Muriel. Why, old as I am, I want to leap on white charges and ride out to do deeds of daring do in your name. Henrietta, my beloved, my dear wife, I know you'll forgive me. I'm in no way unfaithful to your memory for all our lovely years together. We were men destined for each other, and I cannot wait to join you. But we both know that first love has a special glow all to itself. But if his thoughts were like that, all he said was... In answer to your question, Muriel, yes. For quite a while I have wished to be dead and out of this world and trying a new one. Back with my Henrietta. But I've had my mind changed. By me? Why? Oh, a lifetime at the bar and particularly the years on the bench have educated this somewhat prominent nose of mine to the stench of injustice. I smell its aroma in what you're accounting to me. Now, you please go on. Well, now, where was I? On your way back to what was once your father's house in New York, now part of Cloverdale Homes for Aged Gentlewomen. Yes. Did you ever know the house? Yes, I think I might have been there once or twice. On Sutton Place, with a garden that runs down to the river. Oh, oh yes. Don't I remember a, a boathouse and a dock? Yes. Uh... And above it, high enough to look over the roof and across the river... Do you remember the chestnut tree with the seat halfway round the trunk? <laughs> I remember a lovely shade tree just right for the afternoon sun. That's it. Well, it was all there. I mean, just as it was when I was a little girl, as if I'd never been away. How beautiful you make it sound. Oh, how beautiful it still is. I was so stunned to see it all the same that while I was waiting to see Mr. Blessing, I let myself out into the gardens. I was drawn by the tree, just to sit there a moment and look out over the river. But when I got there, there was another little old lady like me sitting on the seat, a bird of a lady with a long feather boa wrapped around her. <laughs> a feather boa? Yes, I was surprised myself. I haven't seen one since I was a child. But she was very sweet, and she said, Oh, I... Is there room enough for you to sit down? I, I could easily move. No, no, no. There's plenty of room. Uh, you know, I, I love to mm. sit in just this particular spot and watch the boats go by. You can see all the way down to the bridges around the jog if you sit just here. I know. You do? But you're new, aren't you? I used to live here when I was a little girl. This was my house. Oh. I was born right there in the corner room on the second floor. Oh, really? Isn't that fascinating? Well, that, that, that's my room now. Have you... Are you joining us? I don't know yet. Oh, well, if you do, you shall have it back. Oh, no, I couldn't. Oh, nonsense. The room you were born in? But I couldn't oh. turn you out. Have you lived here long? Oh, 22 years now. I'm Mrs. Leffert. Mr. Blessing's mother-in-law. That's the gentleman I'm here to see. Oh, well, I hope you can arrange to be here. I'd, I'd enjoy the companionship. You know, we have something in common. We do. Yes. Both of my granddaughters were born here, too. They're over there, see, playing tennis with, with some of the staff. Good heavens, I didn't notice someone uh -huh. built a tennis court. Yes. My son-in-law, he knew my, my Betty particularly loves to play. Which one is she? Oh, the, the blonde one with the pigtails. <laughs> That's my daughter. How many old ladies are here now? Oh, well, you, you're looking at the only one. Just you? Well, Mr. Blessing's mother lived here until she died quite a few years ago. Now there's there's only me. Which leaves you almost a stranger, doesn't it? Yes, I... It's quite lonely. Oh, I do hope you join us. I'd better talk to Mr. Blessing. Oh, well, he'll be in the library. Second door to the right. Oh, but of course, since it was your house, you, you'd know that. Well, 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 how nice to meet you, Mrs. Parks. Come in. 
Come in. Thank you. I, I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, but, well, uh, pressure of events. Pressure of events. Uh, allow me to seat you. You're very kind. Not at all. Not at all. My pleasure. My bent, if I may say so, and, of course, my calling. Well, uh, Mrs. Hatcher has been in touch with me. Matter of fact, I was just on the phone again with her, and I'm happy to say that in spite of uh, a few difficulties, we have managed to arrange everything. You mean I can be accepted? My dear lady, who has a better right? But you realize that I don't have all of the entries. Whatever you have, whatever you have, the balance would be waived as a matter of course in your case. Then I can come with you to live. My dear, Cloverdon's doors are open to you. After all, your father did leave us a considerable bequest. Most generous man, a true philanthropist. Uh, now, uh, just as a matter of business, there are certain papers... Oh, before I sign those, may I ask you something? Oh, ask away. Do I understand that I will be living here? Uh, here? Well, I was born in this house, you know. Oh, were you? Yeah, how pleasant. Well, now, uh, we shall have to see what can be done. It's yeah, such a pity, but for the moment, that won't be possible since we are full up here. Oh, but Mrs. Leffert said oh. that she... Oh, you've met my mother-in-law? <laughs> yes. While I was waiting, I sneaked out to have a little look at the garden again. So, uh, you had a talk with Lily, uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Leffert? Oh, just a few words, really, but she told me that she has my old room. No. Oh, what, what, what a coincidence. And she was nice enough to say she'd give it up for me, although, of course, I would never do uh, Mrs. Parks, uh, uh, forgive me if this seems a little abrupt, but uh, Mrs. Leffert's, uh, my mother-in-law, is uh, uh, just a little... Um, how shall I say it? She tends to wander somewhat. Not quite in touch. I'm sure you understand. My dear, never have guessed. She seems so clear and and lucid. Yes, yes, doesn't she? Well, well, well the fact is, well, uh, I don't think we need to dwell on it too much. Only that she lives in the past. Uh, uh, another world. We were able to make an accommodation for you at what we like to call the country house. Well, I won't say I'm not disappointed. We Particularly... are really doing what we can, Mrs. Parks, uh, waiving the customary fee. And I paid $250. Yeah, well, and I... that's a matter of phrasing. Half the customary fee. And it has taken quite a bit of maneuvering to locate you in what we call uh, one of our deluxe rooms. But I'm very grateful, of course. Oh, no need to be, no need to be. Only your due. Uh, we'll consider it all arranged, and uh, as the French say, uh, fait accompli. Uh, no further red tape, except uh, one little formality. Here, if you would just sign right here, please. Well, what, what is it that I'm to sign? Oh, it's nothing to bother your pretty head about just lawyers' jargon about the assignment of property. <laughs> but I haven't any property. Well, it's perfectly all right. It's just necessary paperwork. But don't you think well, I should read it first? Well, naturally, if, if you want. It really is the merest formality. But I think perhaps I'll just take this with me and look it over. Well, well there's really no need. But you have no objection, surely? Oh, I, uh, 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 no, no, of course not. Uh, none at all. And you've brought the paper to me, Muriel. Well, maybe I'm being overcautious. I, I just didn't like Mr. Blessing. I haven't even met him, and already I don't. I certainly didn't trust him. I suppose it's old-fashioned of me, but for all his manners, he just didn't seem like a gentleman. Yeah, so he sounds to me like a first-class snake in the grass. <laughs> uh, may I see the document, Muriel? Of course. Thank you. But you don't mind reading it. You see, I, I can't make any sense out of it. Well, naturally. There wouldn't be any need for us lawyers if you could, huh? <laughs> <gasps> mm. mm -hmm. And you say this Mrs. Lefferts was the only old lady you saw there? Yes, and she even told me she was. But you saw quite a few other people about. Well, yes, but all much younger, playing tennis. And 
She said something about there being her daughter and some of the staff. I see how many. Well, three or four, I suppose. But I peeked into the dining room and the table was set for ten. Hmm. Uh, have you, uh, have you read this yet? Not all of it. Well, I told you, it's so difficult to follow. Well, I'll only read you the pertinent clause and not even all of that. Agrees to transfer all right, title, and interest, both real and personal, in the estate of her father, Dr. Cyrus Cartwright, and to execute whatever instruments may be necessary there, too. You understand that? Yes. Why? Well, I mean, isn't that just customary? But you no longer have any interest in your father's estate, do you? Well, no, that's right. I mean, all he left me was gone long exactly. ago. Exactly. So why is it necessary to sign this? But if I don't, they won't let me in. I wonder about that. Yes, I think as we lawyers say, I might just take that under advisement. But uh, not now. Oh, but I can't wait much longer. I'm already holding up the children's marriage as it is. Well, we'll try to do something about that, too. But for the moment, I insist on you coming with me. Where are we going? <laughs> to do something I should have had the courage to do 40 years ago. I am going to take you to dinner. And then... I'm going to walk you to your house. But the paper... Oh, that's something I shall digest alone, along with a few other musty documents I'll dig up tomorrow morning. First, I want to reread your father's will carefully. And then tomorrow, you and I will pay a visit to your home. But it's not my home anymore. <laughs> oh, yes, but who knows? In my long and checkered career in the legal profession, I've discovered at least one truism. So what's that? But where there's a will, there's usually a way. <laughs> but the will didn't seem to be the answer. There was no doubt of its validity and of the fact that the house was deeded and signed over irrevocably. So just what does Mr. Justin Travers, retired lawyer and judge, have up his sleeve besides a funny bone and a wry sense of humor? We'll have to wait for the answer to that when I return shortly with Act Three. As it transpires, Judge Justin Travers has a little more up his sleeve than perhaps even he totally bargained for. Because once he returned from the courthouse and the probate records to spruce up for his afternoon appointment with Muriel Parks, that mysterious visitor he had been awaiting the night before paid his second call. And this time, instead of sending his friend Dr. Ridgely away before the arrival... The judge is constrained to call him to share the appointment. <sighs> oh, well, well, Charles. Just take another deep breath. Now, take some of this. Hold it under your tongue. Now, I want you to tell me when this first started while I phoned the hospital for an ambulance. I don't want an ambulance. Justin, you're smack in the middle of a coronary. Your life is on the line. Well, it won't be the first time. What I'm concerned about is it may be the last. So be it. I've known for a long time I'm on borrowed time. Up to last night, ever since Henrietta died, I haven't cared. But now I need to borrow just a few more hours. You remember last night? Uh, yes. I told you I was expecting a visitor and chased you away. Good Lord. I took that at face value. I thought you meant Miss Parks. You mean this? I mean I was having trouble concealing from your eagle eye. And I was having what I suppose you would refer to as a coronary episode. And after you left, I never heard the doorbell ring because <laughs> to this moment I couldn't tell you honestly whether or not I slipped over the border. And then suddenly I heard Muriel's voice calling me back 
And I sensed she was in trouble and she needed me. So I came back or came awake or whatever it was. Did I go beyond the grave? I don't know. I only know that it was to the very edge. But I came back. And I shall not return until I've done what I was called back to do. Well, there it is, Justin. Home for aged gentlewomen. Hmm, yes. Well, the circumstances may be singular, but at least the sign is in the plural. It was so kind of you to come. Uh-huh. The gate is open. To go in. After you, my dear. Thank you. So, these are the gardens. Oh, yes, yes, I recall. And that's the chestnut tree, hmm? Yes, with the river beyond. It's a lovely prospect, isn't it? Not nearly so soul-satisfying as the one I have in view. Will you wait for me here while I have a word with Mr. Blessing? Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Travers. You uh, represent Mrs. Parks, I understand. Mr. Uh, Cartwright's daughter? His only issue. Of course. We must be legally impeccable. Everything... Fully understood. Open covenants, openly arrived at. Hmm? Exactly, Mr. Blessing. Well, then, may I take it your client has signed the release? Uh, merely a matter of form, of course, as I'm sure you've told her. Matter of fact, I haven't. And what you may take, Mr. Blessing, is not any more. I beg your pardon? As I understand it, you're the only superintendent of Cloverdown Homes Incorporated? Yes, but uh, for all practical but purposes... But the chairman of the board is Mr. Carter Rensselaer Boyd IV, I believe. Yes, yeah, that, 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 that is correct. And for all practical purposes, I prefer to deal with the principal. The exclusive Mr. Boyd, it seems, has a taste for seclusion. His telephone number is unlisted. Well, naturally, a man of his eminence... Well, and... let's get him down off. That eminent, shall we? Suppose you give him a ring in his ivory tower and get him over here right away. I'm sorry to have to uh, to uh, intrude on your uh, privacy, Mr. Boyd. Well, of course, of course, bless you. It's most inconvenient. Uh, stop me. Uh, Travers? Justin Travers? Uh, that's right, sir. The judge? What does he want with... Uh, well, well, uh, put him on, put him on. Uh, uh, Mr. Boyd uh, will speak with you now. Thank you. Mr. Boyd? Hello there. Is that Justin Travers, judge, uh, I mean, judge that was? Guilty as charged. Well, bless my soul. I met you once or twice somewhere, didn't I? Yes, we have met, and we're about to do so immediately again. How's that? Oh, no, no, not now. Just... Uh... Mr. Boyd, you are the chairman of the board for Cloverton Homes for Aged Gentlewomen, are you not? Well, yes, I uh, have been for 12 years. And I advise you to come immediately to the home at Sutton Place. <laughs> it, it's, it's all a mystery... Uh, I, I mean, a, a, a misunderstanding, Mr. Boyd. I'm sure it'll all be cleared up as soon as Mr. Travers uh, comes in from the garden with Mrs. Parks. Why do I need him to clear it up, whatever it is? You clear it up for me, Mr. Blessing. Well, I... You see, it's only a, a, a confusion in the... Uh, or the, 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 the application of, of... Well, I mean, Mr. Travers doesn't understand the, the, the operations... Well, he's confused in thinking that... If you ask me, you're the one who's confused. Oh, yeah. there's Judge now. Perhaps we'll get it straightened out. Well, not Judge any longer, Mr. Boy is retired, except for one last case. May I introduce my client, Mrs. Fox, whom I represent as an attorney, of course. Muriel, this is Mr. Carter Rensselaer Boyd, the, uh, how many? The four. How do you do? Mr. Blessing, you already know, of course, Muriel. 
For your information, Miss Boyd, Mrs. Parks is the only daughter of the late Dr. Cyrus Cartwright. Well, good heavens. It's a pleasure, madame, to meet the daughter of one of our institution's main benefactors. I'm sure she'll be delighted to hear that from you, since we uh, have a complaint to make against the management. A complaint? Oh, not serious, I hope. Very serious, sir. When Mrs. Parks applied for admission to the institution, your uh, superintendent, Mr. Blessing, attempted to coerce her into signing a document waiving her interest in her father's estate. You mean Mrs. Parks is an applicant for admission to the homes? Mrs. Parks has suffered, among other things, financial reverses. Oh, I'm so sorry. But, of course, rooms will be made for her at once. Well, I've already arranged that. I, I've done everything possible, including waiving payment for admission. To that snake pit, that bedlam you allow to decay and rot without one thought for its occupants out on Long Island. But not here. Not to her father's own house. You see, I was born here, Mr. Boyd, right under this roof. And it would mean so much to come back. Oh, Blessing. Why can't she? Well, because we, 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 we are full up. Mr. Blessing, let me ask you, how many inmates have you accommodated here in the last 18 years? Why, of... Uh, uh... A good many. The, 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 the number uh, varies. How many at present? Well, uh, 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 at the moment, uh, uh, only one. And her name? Uh, uh, Mrs. Leffert. Who happens to be your mother-in-law. Well, uh, yes, but... Is but... she enrolled as an inmate? Well, well uh, no, but uh, she is an old lady. And so, if Muriel will pardon me for saying so... Is Mrs. Parks. Oh, it's all right, Justin. I qualify. Now, Mr. Blessing, yesterday when Mrs. Parks was here, she noticed that the dining room table was set for ten. Were you having a party? Well, of course not. Well, then it's customary. Well, yes. Who are the ten? Oh, uh, the, um, uh, inmates, uh, members of my staff, and, uh, and, uh, and, um, uh, never mind. Uh, family. How many in your family? Six. Counting your mother-in-law? Uh, no. Uh, that would make, uh, 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 seven. Uh, Judge Travers. Mr. I... Travers, attorney, as of now. Yes. Well, uh, Mr. Travers, I don't think this is necessary if you're trying to prove that there's room here for Mrs. Parks. I'm sure we'll agree that it can be made. Will you also agree that this property has never been used as an old lady's home? Oh, uh, well, Mrs. Uh, Park, uh, would you please repeat what Mr. Blessing's own mother-in-law told you? Oh, I'd be happy to. She told me that she'd lived here for all the 22 years that her son-in-law had been superintendent. And there have never been any old ladies here except herself and Mr. Blessing's mother till she died. Uh, as now, uh, isn't this just a question of uh, management? Ah, well, yeah. of course, of course. This is administrative headquarters. We own the property to use as we see fit. Who oh, do you? And can you? Gentlemen, have you ever read the exact wording in the will? <laughs> as I see you haven't. Well, then allow a lawyer to read it to you. To the Cloverton Home for Aged Gentlewomen Incorporated, I give the sum of $25,000 together with my home and furnishings in Sutton Place, provided that these premises and their appurtenances shall be used for an old lady's home. Otherwise, said house and furnishings shall become part of my residuary estate. Well, what about it? Simply that my client, Mrs. Parks, nay Cartwright, happens to be the residuary legatee of her father's estate. And since your corporation has never satisfied the terms of the will, this house legally reverts to her. Good Lord. Is this true, Judge Travis? Well, if you want my opinion, I can assure you that it is, as your own lawyers will tell you. That won't be necessary. Blessing, you're fired. Oh, but, but where will I go? 
Uh, are you going to put me out of my home? Your home. Mr. Blessing, this is Mrs. Park's home. De facto and de jura. The rest of us are only trespassers. <laughs> Justin, you must be tired. Yes, I am a, a little... Mm. Pleasant looking out at the river. One more river to cross. What? Hmm? Oh, I was just thinking how peaceful it is. Under the tree. <laughs> how happy I am for you, Muriel. Yes. But I've been thinking, I don't think Mr. Boyd should resign as he plans to. I'm not that old yet. I'm strong and healthy. I don't want to spoil my father's wishes. So why can't the corporation keep the property, turn it into a real old lady's home, and let me run it as resident manager? Well, if that's what you want, I'm sure it can be arranged. I would. But only if Mrs. Lefferts can stay and be my first guest. I know she wants to, and I'd like her to. She really is a dear little thing. And so, may I say, are you? <laughs> Goodbye, Muriel. Must you go so soon? Actually, I'm going very late. Thank you. For riding to my aid, Sir Knight. I never could resist a, a damsel in distress. <laughs> You'll excuse me. I, I have an appointment I have to, to keep. Justin, hold on. The ambulance will be here any moment. It's too late. Doesn't matter. I'd rather die here in my old windshield. Well, I'm not going to let you. You can't stop it, Charles. You know, I really died last night. But I had to see Muriel safe. Now my old chariot can spread its wings. <laughs> That's my transport now. Just as... It's all right, Charles. All right. Muriel's found her home. And now... I'm going back... to Henry. <laughs> Scott in Pache, Justin Travers, 78 full years. And a man, when he has to go, should be able to bow out on a note of triumph. No need to mourn him, just remember him. Dr. Charles Ridgely had the headstone inscribed aptly. We shall not look upon his like again. I'll be back shortly. Sad, sweet, and haunting story when all is done. And one question always lingers in my mind. Would Justin Travers' obituary have appeared a few days earlier in the paper if Muriel Parks had not come back into his life? For certainly the visitor he expected that first night was the one he was there to greet the following one. Well, it's an idle speculation because, of course, we'll never know. Our cast included Marion Seldes, Ian Martin, Robert Dryden, Ken Harvey, and Bryna Rayburn. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale.
kidnappings are usually planned, Mr. Melvin. Very often, there's some inside connivance. Now, could one of your servants have overheard your daughter and Jeffrey Pollard make plans for the evening? But you may have traitors among your workers. I have none in mine. How would the kidnappers know they'd be parked at that hamburger joint? How would they know? Well, I ask you, Inspector, where else do young people end the evening in this town? Who would want to harm your daughter? You have a one-track mind, and it leads nowhere. My daughter is the sweetest, most generous child. So gentle, so sensitive. She's not like so many of today's depraved young people. She's not a part of this drug craze, whatever they call it, culture. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> 